Welcome to our all-age worship from St. Mark's. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, today as we think upon your ascended Son, we give ourselves to worshipping you, to hearing from you, and to committing ourselves to lives of loving service. Come, Holy Spirit, inspire us and lead us. Amen. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, While he was eating with them, he gave them this command. 
Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thursday the 13th is Ascension Day, when the writer of Acts describes how Jesus was taken up and the cloud hid him from the disciples' sight as they stood on Mount Olives. Two things stand out for me. One is that as a result of the Ascension, we are given proof that someday Jesus will return. The disciples ask the question, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Already imagining, I'm sure, what noble positions they will hold. Can't you just picture Jesus shaking his head in despair as the confusion they continue to demonstrate? And he says, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But, Jesus goes on to say, you too will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. At that point, Jesus leaves them for the final time, as he was taken up before their very eyes with a cloud hiding him from their sight. Of prime importance to us is that we prepare ourselves for that time when he shall come again to gather his own unto him, that we are ready for his return. Someone once said, if I am always ready, I shall be ready when Jesus comes. Can't you just picture them standing there, looking up, their hands shielding their eyes from the glare of the sun as they stared, open-mouthed, into the sky. What on earth is happening now, they're probably wondering. They were so awestruck that they didn't even notice two angels come and stand amongst them. That is, not until the two asked, Men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? You're not accomplishing anything. You have work to do. We, today's disciples, have to get our heads out of the clouds, or perhaps even out of the sand, and get to work to spread the good news, to do God's work. Many of us are doing so on a regular basis. There's the phone call we make, or flowers we send when a friend loses a loved one. There's a cup of coffee we share with a neighbor who's going through a difficult time. There's the visit with a relative or friend who is in a nursing home or hospital. And in the course of the visit, we express our concern for the person. We offer our prayers. 
We share the hope that we have found in God, or we merely hold the hand of the person who is struggling. What we are doing for the least of them, we are doing unto Jesus. The second thing of importance to me is if we say we are followers of Christ, then we cannot afford to stand around and do nothing. Like the disciples, we have to stop staring into space, so to speak, and get to work. We heard in the reading, you are to be witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We, on the other hand, must be witnesses in Hamilton Parish, in Smith's Parish, in fact, in all of Bermuda, every opportunity we get. Teresa of Avila writes, Christ has nobody now on earth but ours, no hands but ours, no feet but ours. Ours are the eyes to see the needs of the world. Ours are the hands with which to bless everyone. Ours are the feet which are to take us where we are needed. We are believers in Christ. We are people baptized by water and by the Spirit. We have that power, a power given to us by God to make a difference out there, to bring people to the knowledge and love of God through what we say and do, through the story we have to share. When people come to know us, will they know instantly that we are a disciple of Jesus? If that's not the case, I would say we have some work to do before Jesus comes again in clouds of glory. For according to the angels, the same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Will we be ready? A Negro spiritual puts it this way. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. One day the Lord's going to crack the sky and the dead in Christ shall rise. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. No man knows the day or the hour when the Lord will surely come. That's why you need to get your house in order. Don't let him catch you with your work undone. You've got to get ready. Oh, yes, when Jesus comes. The disciples waited as they were told until they received, as promised, Jesus' spiritual presence in a very real and fiery and powerful way. But that's the Pentecost story. Stay tuned for more. Amen. Ascended Lord, today may we turn our eyes from heaven and to the earth to which we are called. Baptize us in your spirit that we might be your witnesses in our homes and communities, proclaiming and demonstrating your unfailing love, now and forever. Amen.
Holy God, as we wait for Jesus' return, may we be faithful stewards of all the good things that you have given us. May your light shine through us as we declare your love to be without limit, now and forever. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let this be my song.